Okay, pre-cal 11, let's get after it. Here we go, video number seven. We've moved on from adding and subtracting radicals. Now we're gonna multiply and divide. So, multiplication tends to be easier than addition subtraction. If you consider <clears throat> when we did it with fractions versus now, it's, it's really just numbers with numbers, and in this case, radicals with radicals. The only thing we need to consider is can we simplify the radical after the fact? Because what we saw when we simplified radicals was we needed two identical factors. So you can actually tackle this a number of different ways. So I'll show you two here. In this case, you're going to go 2 times 5 is 10. And then the square root of 6 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 18. But then you might look at that and go, okay, well, hold on. The square root of 18 is the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. Well, so that's just 10 times 3 times root 2, which is 30 times root 2. So you're tying all your things together. So there's one way. The other way would be to look at your roots and say, okay, well, that's root 6. So that means I have 2 times 5, and then times root 2 times root 3, which is root 6, and then times root 3 again. And now you'll see you have two root 3s, and root 3 times root 3 is just 3. So then you have 2 times 5 times 3, and then times root 2, and again, you get the answer 30 root 2. Now, if this, what I just did here, bugs you, Remember, root 3 times root 3 is 9, and root 9 is 3. If you have the same number times itself and it's a root, it, it, you're squaring it. So it's canceling off the radical sign, and they're just the number that's left underneath. So that's a couple ways to look at it. I prefer the way on the left because for me it's just a little bit smoother, but I'm also a little bit more uh, practiced at this. So however you need to do it. So let's look at another one. Here we go. <clears throat> Multiply. Okay, well, I'm going to take this negative 3, and I'm going to multiply it by the 4, and I'm going to have negative 12. And then what I'll do this time is I'll multiply the 2x times the 3x, and I'll put them under here, 2x times 3x. Now remember that multiplication order doesn't matter, so I'm going to rewrite this now as 2 times 3 times x times x. And I'm a square root, and I have two identical factors under the square root, so the x will come out now. So I have negative 12x, and then I have root 6 left underneath. Now, division is very, very similar, but division is actually easier to see with respect to breaking up our roots, because now I have 14 root 6 over 7 root 3, but I know that 14 divided by 7 is just 2, but then root 6 is root 2 times root 3, and then over root 3, and you can see the same thing divided by itself cancels, so you're just left with 2 root 2. So you get more and more comfortable with using roots as actual numbers. All the, the principles and foundations of regular numbers like multiplication and division we learned prior follows the same with roots. They're just a little bit different looking, but the, the principles and the concepts stay the same, like this, the same thing divided by itself here. Now, what about when multiplication is just a little bit more complicated? So one, here we have two binomials, two terms within each thing. Now, First one, I'm going to use the distributive method, which means we take this entire thing, and this one's longer, but you have to use the distributive method if you don't have binomials. If this was a trinomial, so if it had three terms, then you have to use the method I'm about to demonstrate. This entire thing multiplies in, which means you're going to be left with 2 root 3 and then times 2 root 3 minus 3 root 2, and then plus, so this part, root 2, and then times the same thing, 2 root 3 minus 3 root 2. And this distributive method, these questions get really long. If you had three or four terms in here, you'd have, you'd have to turn your page sideways because it's going to take a while. Because now what we do is we water bomb in here and in here. And you do the same thing. So 2 times 2 is 4. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. So, okay, that simplifies right up to that. And then now we multiply over here. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And root 3 times root 2 is root 6. So that's the first one done. And now we go this times this, which is going to be plus 2 root 6. And then this times this, which is minus 3. And then root 2 times root 2 is just 2. And now we can simplify. So now you have 12 minus 6 root 6 plus 2 root 6 minus 6. Group your like terms. So this one with this one. So 6, and then this one with this one, minus 4 root 
six. We can't go any further than that. So now when you're doing a whole bunch of water bombing, um, but if you have two binomials like this, we can also use good old fashioned foil. So foil our first, so this times this, two times two is four, root three times root three is three. So you can see that gave us this bit here. And then outside root two, or two root three times two gives us plus two root six. And you can see that gave us this one. And then inside, so minus six root six, and you can see that gave us this one. And then our last, which is negative three, but then two root two times root two is times two, which gives us that one. And naturally here, we're gonna end up with the same solution Foil is definitely more straightforward when we have binomials. So six minus four root six. Yay. Okay. So what if you have a different root index though? How are you gonna simplify something with a different root index? Well, remember this relationship where you can convert a root into an exponent. So in this scenario, how do we simplify this? Well, this just means X to the two over four, which means x to the one half, which just means the square root of x. So we just simplified that radical. But now if you see a scenario like this, okay, we're gonna multiply these things together, but I have different root indexes. So switch them into exponents and everything starts to make sense because now you have x to the one, uh, sorry, three over two, right? We have our power and our root times x to the one third. And now all of a sudden this is manageable. Now we just need a common denominator. So x to the common denominator is gonna be six. So x to the nine over six times x to the two over six gives us x to the 11 over six. And now we have uh, the tools to be able to say, okay, well, I'll, x to the 11 over six is the same as x to the six over six times x to the five over six, which means we have x and then the sixth root of x to the five. <clears throat> the other way to look at that would be to say, okay, we have the sixth root of x to the 11, but then you'll go, well, hold on. x to the 11 is just x to the six times x to the five, and that cancels and comes out. So we end up back here. You'll get better at this stuff as you practice it. Okay, so do a couple more here. So now we have, well, flower power. This gives me three over four, and then this gives me two over three. So again, we need a common denominator, which in this case will be 12. So we get a to the nine over 12 times a to the eight over 12 which then adds together to give us 17 over 12. Now, this is actually easier to simplify by keeping it as a fraction, 12 over 12 times five over 12, because then you get one A that's out, and then the 12th root of A to the five, and you have simplified. <clears throat> and now division, similar step, right? We still need to convert. So in this case, we have three over two, and then here we have x to the one over three. And again, common denominator is gonna be six. So x to the nine over six divided by x to the two over six. In this case, we get x to the seven over six because we subtract our exponents. And again, now this would be x to the six over six times x to the one over six. We break that up into those and it's just easier to see that comes out of the radical and that is still left in our sixth root. So the fractions really help you identify uh, roots and um, what comes out of the root, because if you can get a complete fraction, it turns into x to the one. Okay, we got a couple more examples here. The last thing we're gonna look at is what we call rationalizing the denominator. So it means you do not want a radical in the denominator, because if you recall, a radical is an irrational number if it's not a perfect square. So you look at root two over seven, we're technically looking at this. And really all we're saying is this is just to appease math people. We don't like seeing irrational numbers in our root in our denominator, so we wanna get rid of it. And we use equivalent fractions, which means whatever we multiply the bottom, we multiply the top. So in order to get rid of root seven, I need to multiply by root seven, right? I need to square it, because that's just gonna give me seven on the bottom. 
If I do it to the bottom, I do it to the top. So on the top, I have the square root of 14. Now this is exactly the same value as this. It just doesn't have an irrational number in the denominator. We're picky, and that's what we're asking for. Now it gets a little more complicated when you have a higher root index, because this would be the cube root of 2 over the cube root of y. Now if you were to just multiply this by the cube root of y, you don't have enough factors, because you need three y's. So if you have a cube root, you're actually going to need to do it twice, because now you have, essentially if we were to multiply this out, write it under one radical, you have the cube root of 2y squared, and you have the cube root of y cubed, which is perfect, because those cancel, which now gives you the cube root of 2y squared over y. So be careful. As the root in indexes increase, you might need to multiply by a few more factors. And that's all with one denominator, like one term in the denominator. Next, what happens if you have multiple terms like this, like 2 minus root 5? This comes right back to our connection between difference of squares. Because if you remember foiling the difference of squares, we got x squared. And then in this case, minus 4x plus 4x. So this value here and this value here, when paired, right, gave us these. And since it's a difference of squares, those cancel out. So essentially, we lose our x term, and then we multiply our back things together, right? What do we have? We have two perfect squares. And if you have two perfect squares, there's no way for you to have a radical. So that means if you have 2 minus 5, we need to multiply by what we call the conjugate, 2 plus root 5 because that is going to give you your difference of squares FOIL setup, right? 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times root 5 is plus 2 root 5. And then minus root 5 times 2 is minus 2 root 5. And there's the rub, right? By those cancel. Our root 5 is gone. And then root 5 times root 5 is just 5. So in the denominator now, we end up with the number negative 1. Now in the numerator, yeah, we have to go 3 times 2 and 3 times root 5. So we end up with 6 plus 3 root 5. Now divided by negative 1, which will simplify out to negative 6, or let's just do it in brackets. Bring that negative 1 to the front, because dividing by negative 1 is the same as multiplying by negative 1. So you could say that. But you can see that the conjugate is that direct relationship to foiling a difference of squares. So you're just looking for the opposite sign in here and here. That is how you get the conjugate. So here you go, the last one. You got root x plus one. So what's the conjugate? Well, it's root x minus one. And then here, root x minus one. Now this will be slightly more complicated because you have to use FOIL on both the top and the bottom. Now on the bottom in the denominator, root x times root x gives us x, and then root x times negative 1, and then root x times positive 1, perfect, cancels out, and then 1 times negative 1 is just negative 1. So that's all we have left in the bottom. Now on the top, though, we get root x times root x, which is x, and then root x times negative 1, which is negative root x, and then negative 2 times root x, which is minus 2 root x, and then negative 2 times negative 1, which is uh, plus 2. And then this will simplify to x minus 3 root x plus 2 all over x minus 1. And we are happy because our denominator has been rationalized. So there's a lot going on there, particularly when you get to the conjugate and rationalizing, but have some fun with it. Practice. There's lots of questions in your workbook to get after. This ties to section 2.0. Four. Again, if you have any questions, you could always let me know or leave a comment and I'll see what I can uh, put together for you. Thank you so much and I will see you next time.